we start with one dimensional flows and we'll focus on flows on the line. Consider the following general nonlinear system. x1 dot is equal to f1 as a function of x1 to xn all the way to xn dot is equal to fn as a function of x1 to xn. Now let's make a statement about the above system. The solutions can be visualized as trajectories flowing through an n-dimensional phase space with coordinates x1 all the way to xn. Now let's actually go a bit easy and start with the case n is equal to 1. That is x dot is equal to f of x where x of t is a real valued function of t and f of x is a smooth real valued function of x. So this is an example of a one dimensional system. Now here are some notes. As the function f does not explicitly depend on time, the resulting equation is autonomous. Non-autonomous equations are equations of the form x dot is equal to f of x t and are in general much harder to analyze. Now given a nonlinear equation x dot is equal to f of x, normally we first try and look for an explicit analytical solution. This is usually very hard. But we can start learning about the equation using geometric methods. Here's an example. x dot is equal to sin x, which is nonlinear because of the sin x term. Now let us actually first consider a small angle approximation which is useful for trigonometric functions in the limit that the angle approaches 0. So sin x is approximated as x. So now consider dx dt is equal to x which is a linear equation. So to solve it we separate variables to get dx by x is equal to dt. Note that we are assuming that x is not equal to 0. However, x of t is equal to 0 is also a solution to this ordinary differential equation. So we integrate and then exponentiate to find the solution x of t is equal to c1 e to the t where c1 is an arbitrary constant. But what we really wanted to do was to learn about the original nonlinear system. Now let's actually start with the nonlinear equation x dot is equal to sin x. Now this equation actually does have an analytical solution, but very few nonlinear equations actually admit exact solutions. So to solve the equation, we separate the variables and then integrate. So dt is equal to dx by sin x which gives us t is equal to the integral of cosecant of x dx. Evaluating this integral we get minus log of cosecant of x plus the cotangent of x plus a constant. We suggest that you actually look this integral up we need to evaluate the constant c1. So we let x is equal to x0 at t is equal to 0 and we get c1 is equal to the log of cosecant of x0 plus cotangent of x0. So the final solution turns out to be t is equal to the cosecant of x0 plus the cotangent of x0 divided by the cosecant of x plus the cotangent of x. 
So here is an exercise. Can you solve for x in terms of t? You should do this on your own. Now we have an exact result, but can it actually help to build intuition about the original nonlinear system? Now let us just recap what we have. We have a nonlinear equation x dot is equal to sine x and using some analytical methods we were able to obtain an exact analytical solution to this particular equation. Now what we really want is to build intuition about the nonlinear system and be able to answer practical minded questions. For example, suppose that the initial condition is x of 0 is equal to pi on 4, then can we describe the qualitative features of the solution x of t for all t greater than 0? What happens as t tends to infinity? More generally, suppose we pick any arbitrary initial condition x of 0, then what is the behavior of x of t as t tends to infinity? Now the explicit solution is exact but not extremely helpful to answer the above questions quickly. Now the nonlinear equation at hand is x dot is equal to sine x. So let us actually plot x dot versus x. Now here is a slightly simple minded plot of x dot versus x. Now think of x as the position of an imaginary particle that is moving along the real line. Then x dot is the velocity of the particle. Then x dot is equal to sine x represents the vector field on the line. Now essentially it represents the velocity vector x dot at each x. Now to plot the vector field we do the following. Plot x dot versus x. Draw arrows on the x axis to indicate the corresponding velocity vector at each x. The arrows should point to the right when x dot is greater than 0 and they should point to the left when x dot is less than 0. Now please pay very close attention to the plot of x dot versus x. We highlight the region of positive velocity where the arrows point to the right and note the region of negative velocity where the arrows will point to the left. Now let's actually offer some physical interpretation. Imagine that we have some fluid that is flowing steadily along the x-axis with a velocity that actually varies from place to place. Then this is essentially just happening according to x dot is equal to sine x. Now the flow is to the right when x dot is greater than 0 and the flow is to the left when x dot is less than 0. At points where x dot is equal to 0 there is actually no flow and such points are called fixed points. These are points where there is no velocity. Now there are two kinds of fixed points. Stable fixed points, also referred to as attractors, and unstable fixed points, referred to as repellers. Now look at the diagram. The closed circles are the stable fixed points and the open circles are the unstable fixed points. 
Note that on the stable fixed points, the flow is getting attracted towards them and on the unstable fixed points, the flow is getting repelled from them. What we really want to do now is get some additional insight into this nonlinear system that we have. Now recall the earlier question. Suppose that x0 is equal to pi on 4, then what really happens as t tends to infinity? Now from the above picture, the particle starts at x0 is equal to pi on 4 and then moves to the right faster and faster until it crosses x is equal to pi on 2. Then the particle slowly starts to slow down and approaches the stable fixed point at x is equal to pi. So the limit as t tends to infinity x of t is equal to pi if the particle actually started at pi on 4. Here are some notes. First, the curve will be concave up corresponding to the initial acceleration for x less than pi on 2. Then the curve will be concave down highlighting deceleration towards x is equal to pi. Now let's go ahead and plot x versus t. We first highlight x is equal to pi which is our stable fixed point. Highlight pi on 2 and pi on 4 which was our initial condition and that's the curve of x versus t. Observe that we did not use the analytical solution to actually answer the above question. We can apply the same reasoning to any initial condition x0. If x dot is greater than 0 initially, the particle moves to the right and asymptotically reaches the nearest stable fixed point. If x dot is less than 0 initially, the particle approaches the nearest stable fixed point from its left. And if x dot is equal to 0, then x remains constant. The qualitative form of the solution for any initial condition can actually be plotted using the rules that we have identified on the left. Here's a snapshot of what the solutions would look like. Note that the trajectories are converging towards x is equal to pi and x is equal to minus pi. And the reason is because these are the stable fixed points. Okay, so now let's just wrap up this lecture with some concluding remarks. We started our study of nonlinear systems with equations of the form x dot is equal to f of x. These were one dimensional flows and in particular we were rather keen to understand flows on the line. Now when you're given a nonlinear equation, the first thing you normally try is to try and get an explicit analytical solution. Now the first thing to remember is that explicit analytical solutions are usually very, very difficult to get for nonlinear systems. Okay, so we had a particular example. We said let x dot is equal to sine x. Now in this particular case, we were able to get an explicit analytical solution. We separated the variables and we integrated and the integral worked out explicitly. And in this case, we were able to get an explicit analytical solution. However, the form of the solution was not very easy to understand. It was not very easy to absorb. It certainly wasn't very easy to develop intuition about the form of the solutions. So what we did was we went on to look at some geometric reasoning. Now essentially all we did was we plotted x dot versus x for this particular equation 
x dot is equal to sin x. Now, as soon as we did that, we found that there were interesting cases that showed up when x dot was greater than 0, when x dot was less than 0, and when x dot was actually equal to 0, we encountered fixed points for the first time. Now, such fixed points we found could either be stable or they could be unstable. And now with this geometric form, we were able to ask and start answering questions of the form that if you chose a particular initial condition, what would the solutions look like as t tends to infinity? So in particular, we just picked x0 is equal to pi on 4 as the initial condition and asked what happens as time carried on. Yeah. So the lesson learned from there was that geometric reasoning can certainly complement analytical solutions in the case that we can find analytical solutions and in the case that we actually can't find analytical solutions it's a good way to actually start yeah and but we have to be very careful that geometric reasoning may not be able to give all the answers we want for example if you were asked after a particular quantitative question of the form what is the time at which x dot is equal to sin x has the greatest speed then the geometric reasoning will not be in a position to answer such form of quantitative questions.